and move on to an education system which is all about you know don't take any risk, do all this, study this, score high in exams. Why learning is all about experimentation, keep failing, keep trying, and uh, especially from an entrepreneur's perspective, if you are here to build a billion dollar company, that is the kind of stuff is required. You know, if you are here to join, as I said, Netflix to make people watch TV shows, clearly education works, and I think it is the best way for you to progress. But if you are looking at changing the world in a way nobody else has thought, you need to go in the learning atmosphere. And that's exactly what happened with me. You know, luckily, unluckily, uh, I was 16 and I, was, I, I learned computer programming. I used to program on something called the ZX Spectrum Plus. How many of you have heard of the ZX Spectrum Plus? ZX Spectrum Plus. No Googling allowed. Does anybody know what processor was on that computer? It was one of the earliest home computers called the ZX Spectrum Plus. So this is five points, if you can get this right, without Googling. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> so uh, I get five points, and the score is 6, 1. Um, it uses a processor called the Z80 processor. So we're talking about the pre-286, 386, 8080 processor, very, very early days. And that was a device uh, which could barely program what we call GW basic at that point of time. And I remember writing my first set of games on a device like that. And this was an era when computers, like you could pretty much count the amount of computers in India, forget about the world. And it was the really early days of computing. There were no training classes, there were no internet, there was nothing. It was just me with my computer uh, in, a, in a dark room who was essentially trying to play with this, experiment with it. And what kept me motivating was the whole idea of, wow, I can now make these games, play these games and program these games. I remember that, that time we used to have audio cassettes to actually store data. I'm sure a lot of you have not even seen floppy drives. And I'm not talking of floppy drives, I'm talking of audio cassettes. Uh, which was used to store data at one point of time. So the journey of learning is what got me to where I am. And unfortunately, I don't see that happening a lot here. Of course, there is a new culture which is coming up, the whole culture of hackathons, the whole culture of maker studios, maker labs, which is essentially encouraging young people to take technology and to mash it up and put together things. But the fundamental the uh, premise of learning is failing. And how many of you have failed in your life in day? Especially this is not the right thing. Like, come on, you're not failing. You're all whatever. <laughs> how, much, how many of you have scored? What are the highest marks in IIT? I don't even know. Like 500? What is it? What's the score in JE which you call? What is the highest score? 400? 480. So, my point is that you are all have not seen failure in life. The fact that you are here is makes you among the top 0.001% of this country and probably the world in terms of intelligence. However, this intelligence was calculated and marked based on multiple choice questions which was designed by some people, not by the parameter which I look at, that how ingenious you are. Are you looking at trying to do something out of the box? Which is what makes the biggest difference. So while I was learning gaming, I soon realized that hey, I need some money. <laughs> I have uh, literally I have a company to run. I have some employees which I got on board and I have to pay salaries. What did I do? I, I went to Pepsi, so I wear my house as a huge office of Pepsi. I created a game in my house which, uh, which essentially allowed Pepsi cans to shoot at Coke bottles. <coughs> and this was the time when the Pepsi and Coke war was at its peak. So when I went to Pepsi, I, you know, I entered with my entire PC out there and I showed them this game. The Pepsi guys were completely crazy because they loved the whole idea of being able to shoot at Coke cans. And believe me, they wrote a check of 5 lakhs to me to get that game. <laughs> and I'm talking, I had no marketing skills, I had no nothing, I was just able to go and passionately demo to them a game which they love. Not only that, Pepsi installed this game on all their machines. 
for their staff and all the other people to play with. And they even did a contest where this game was installed in movie theaters where consumers could go and shoot at Coke cans and if you did 20 in 30 seconds, you got a free Pepsi. So <laughs> a simple idea like this, and again I'm talking in the late, uh, late 90s, 96, 97, is when all this was going on. And again it was a process of experimenting, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, and really working on the learnings. Because there was no education. I mean, till this time, uh, gaming was not even mainstream. Nobody even talked about gaming. Nobody talked about how computers can be used for entertainment or education. This was the time when computers, people were just, in fact, there were protests happening that computers are going to take away the jobs of everybody. I'm talking about that era. Uh, so, now that we've established the difference between learning and education, uh, what is the score? 6-1, I believe. So let me go to my next point, uh, which I, I presume you might learn some, which is about passion and person. So, another five points question. What is the difference between being a person and being passionate? Anybody? What is the difference between passion and person? Sorry? Sorry? So what is the what is the answer? What is the difference between passion and person? Sorry? Passion is? This is what you are so passionate about something that you are so passionate about something that your feet are no longer on the ground. You are just okay. flying. Okay. And being person is okay, we all. You are. Maybe even half a point, I don't know. Uh, I don't feel like giving you to half. Anybody else want to try this answer? What is the difference between being passionate and just being a person? Somebody's calling you one second. You got some extra time, guys, to answer this. So, is. So passionate person is a complacent, I'm sorry, competent. competent person and a non-passionate person is complacent. complacent. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, <laughs> lives and exists. Okay, that's quite a complex answer. I at least can give you one point for that. So, uh, yeah. For a passionate person, there's nothing that bounds him. There's nothing that ties him back and says, no, you have to do this, this, this. What matters for him is what is his passion. A regular person, he has a lot of things to do and he really doesn't know what he wants to do. Okay. That's a good one. Another, another maybe half of it. So, let me tell you a story. And after this story, you can answer the same question. I'm going to give you a huge help in being able to answer this question. So there was this company, and I've told this story a few times before, so if I'm repeating it for someone, it's just your bad luck. Um, so there was this company who wanted to build a wall. So they appointed three people for saying we want to build a wall. Here is the contract and build us a wall. So person number one, build that wall in 30 days in exactly the cost the company told you to do and the right quality everything was perfect. Person number two did that in 29 days and same quality everything but one day before. So. And person number three did that in 15 days at 10 times the quality. So this company was completely amazed at how can three persons who were given this project delivered three completely different results and they had this committee of very smart people like you who said let us investigate and find out what's happening. So they called the first person and the first person said you know what you told me to build this wall, you know it was an easy task, I got hundreds of laborers, I got some contractor types, uh, I got some supervisor, we had a map and everything like what we're drawing and we bought all the material and these guys delivered in 30 days and see how nice this wall is, chaka chaka. 
uh, I also made a 10% profit in making this particular wall. This guy said, great, yeah, very good job. The second person was called and he said, how did you build this wall? So he said, I'm just thinking about I'm an MBA from IIM. So I believe in processes, systems, quality. So I hired a huge amount of planners. We had all these planners who came, we researched on all the walls, what is the best wall in all the R&D. Then we got other set of planners and we did all kinds of researches. And because of all this research and all the R&D we did, we didn't require so many laborers. But we had to get 50 managers because they were all analyzing quality analysis. We imported all our materials from China, Singapore, Germany, all this foreign technology was got in. And because we were so advanced, we actually took 15 days to plan the wall and only 15, uh, 14 days to build the wall. So actually we delivered one day before time and kudos to us. But because we took, did all of this, the reality is we have not made any money. We have made a huge loss in this wall. But, you know, we are a very smart MBA type, so we believe you are going to give us more projects for building more walls and we are going to make all this money in the future. So, this is our investment in you to build a wall. So, I was amazed with that, wow. One day before and with no profit, he's investing in me. So, this guy was amazed. So, finally they called the third guy. So, the third guy just said, okay, what is your qualification? So, he first of all said that, hey, I have no education. I am literally a you know, 10th fail. I have never built a wall in my life. And this was a project I really wanted and I was very passionate about. And I had no money. So what he did was he went to his friends who were equally mad and passionate and he told them a story. The story was that there is this company which has managed to capture an evil dragon. And they want us to build this wall to protect the humanity against this evil dragon. And if we can build this wall successfully, the dragon will be captured and we all, the whole world will be peaceful and so on. However, if this wall is weak, if there are problems, the dragon can escape and the world can get destroyed. And imagine, we are the people who have been chosen. We are the chosen ones who are here to capture this dragon. And if we are successful, the whole world will know about us. And for that, our names will be also written somewhere on the wall, in some corner. But the reality is that this is your opportunity to change the world and stop the dragon. And that one thing made all these people so motivated that they went, went to Google, Wikipedia, YouTube, learned how to make the best wall and employed probably less than 10% of the people work 24 by 7, day and night, and they were able to build the most beautiful wall, very well designed wall, in 15 days, and they made a 200% profit. <laughs> so now tell me, what is the difference between passion and person? Anybody after this story? Not yet? Wow. So I have a very bad storyteller. But so we first get five more points to me. So what's the score now? <laughs> 11 to 1. Come on, IIT guys, I can't be kicking your ass like this. You need to at least score some points. I also have some prizes, about five hundred thousand dollars but we've got some free t-shirts for you, which <laughs> we might be thinking of giving away. Um, so coming back to uh, the difference. Yeah. Same thing goes with the other people, they were also putting 100% dedication. But they did not miss love what they are doing, exactly. Okay, let's, okay, yeah. Suddenly when I said there are three t-shirts, everybody has got charged up. <laughs> so it looks like... Yes, we don't want to give you five points, just like that. Sorry? <laughs> we don't want to give you three key points. Yeah, so answer the question, that's what I'm waiting for. Come on, look that. Maybe I need to give you four options. That is what we kind of get the IITs to answer. <laughs> Yeah, he's a very good storyteller and whatever, whatever that is there, but 
importantly, he he generates passion in others, and he looks at the target rather than like oh analysis I have to do this, I have to do that systematic way. No, his main focus is on the end thing. Okay. Where is it going? Very, very. You are getting close to the answer. Yes. Yeah. Somebody else, your colleague wants to try your friend. As I mean, I have already said, uh, basically a person is a uh, being a person is living by the rules of the society. Uh, society has set some guidelines what is good, what is bad. If we think uh, we don't think out of the box, we just think that these are the guidelines. This is the right thing to do, and we keep doing that, then we are a person. But if we love something and we just do everything we can to achieve it, then that is a passion. Maybe one more person down there. Do I get pictures? Well, I now know how to at least get people from IIT to answer a few pictures. A uh, passionate person is not bounded. He has no set of rules that he has to follow. Uh, he focuses only on the task, and he has no backup plans as to what I might be getting if I'm failing it. He just goes for it. He has to do it right, and uh, uh, he's unconventional. Okay. There was one. So, so the okay, I'm gonna move people out. Okay, we have enough t-shirts, I guess. Yeah. Nobody thought of that as a problem 
which is so humongous that there needs to be a dedicated company working on it. So, if you really look at problems, if you really look at any task, if you are passionate, you will look at it from a completely different angle versus somebody who is just doing it. And I'm not saying a person is not innovative or a person is not going to apply it, smart. They will do all of that. And you know, you saw the example of the first guy making 10% profit. He said any person making lesser profit. But the third person delivering exponential results. And now let me give you a simple example. Why do you think companies like Microsoft who have so much money, or Google who has so much money, and Facebook which was a five member startup, why are these small startups which are five, 10, 20 people who come with the most innovative idea and who come and suddenly change the entire scheme of things in the world? It's purely because it is not about the resources. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about how smart the people you have are. You know, you could have an entire team of MBAs and IITs and Stanford and MIT graduates, and which is what a Microsoft or any other big company does. But you cannot challenge or fight a small group of individuals who are driven by passion. So passion is the most, most scarce and most seeked out commodity. And forget, I can't even call it. It's the most uh, seeked out quality in people. And the problem is that you are all, while you are all getting trained, you know, in IIT and maybe except Raj's class over here, <laughs> in other classes you are all being taught that, hey, how do you answer this question smartly and how do you impress this and how do you impress that. Very few of you are really taking a big problem and saying, how can I take a, a, a chance at changing the world with something like this. And the amazing thing is that India is a country filled with dragons. There is a problem, you go outside IIT and I can tell you, you can identify 500 business opportunities or 500 problems which can create a huge impact. I was just chatting with my friend today and we were saying in India when we cross the road, most car stops at us, you know, they are all trying to run over you versus in the west. You know, if you are trying to cross the road, all the cars will stop to let you cross the road. So has anyone of you thought that what could you do as a product or a solution which can suddenly make all the car drivers stop for people to stop the, to, to cross the road? Or problems regarding potholes. I mean, the, I mean, as I said, the opportunities are immense. But the problem is they are trained to look at what's happening in the West and say, oh, let's get Uber into India or let's copy Flipkart and make it dog cart and cat cart and mouse cart okay. and everybody else. So the easy thing to do is to imitate, to copy, to modify. The difficult thing to do is to come up with something new and innovative. And the fundamental problem is because of this approach of people who are trying to do this with passion or who are not going to do passion. And again, I think you have an amazing opportunity because unlike your predecessors who passed IIT before, they never had an opportunity to hear people like you and me and Raj and others who are crazy to tell you this. And so you are only here, you know, when you hear people outside, most of them are trying to please you to say, yeah, make sure you, are, you accept our job offer, uh, make sure you do it. But I have no qualms in saying that we don't even want to hire you or we don't even want to hire anybody near you. Because you are not fit for a startup culture. You are fit for a big company, a large corporate. <laughs> when I say you are referring to 99.99% of you, there is of course 0.1% out of this room. So I'm sure there's at least one person in this room who might be doing this. I don't know who that person is. But clearly the rest of you are going to be part of the team one and team two who are trying to do the same things again and again. So that's the reality of life. And in my case, that entire thing was with gaming. So imagine, in the year 2001, uh, I actually raised venture capital in 1999. I was 22 years old. I did not know what venture capital meant. I did not know what capital meant. The only capital I knew was, like every Indian boy and every person in India, is loan. And what do our parents tell us? Loan ke baare mein? Kabhi loan mat lena. <laughs> Correct? So, we all believe that they 100% advance, no EMI, no loan, that's, that's the kind of family structure we come with. 
So when uh, I had this company guys, they said, you get the venture capital. I was like, I'm going to venture capital, I'm going to go to We are having fun with what we are doing. But they finally came and told me that venture capital is like a loan which you don't have to pay back. So that suddenly rang a bell. I said, yeah, this is great, right? I mean, imagine if somebody is giving you a loan which you don't have to pay back. So that makes sense. And in no point of time, I mean, it was really funny and uh, you know, Raj knows some of my investors, early investors in the company. So there was this company called PwC who became my investment banker. I didn't know what investment banker meant at that time. And they told me that we are going to make this very complex Excel sheet with all formulas and all numbers and we are going to show it to the investors. You just nod your head and say, yeah, 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 you understand. And then you talk about your vision of gaming. And believe me, that's exactly what I did. The vision of gaming was simple. My simple concept to them was that I believe gaming is going to be the single largest form of entertainment. More people are going to play games than watch movies. It sounded completely crazy for people. So that was good because that time they were all wanting to put money behind crazy ideas. <laughs> um, and the second thing was there was a business plan which showed our numbers moving all, you know, hundreds of crores in you know, profits and revenue. And that's what they did. It was, a, it was a dream. And in no time, I had three and a half crores in the bank. And I'm talking about 1999 without knowing what capital is, without knowing anything. I had all this money in the bank and of course I did exactly what everybody else did, committed all the mistakes on that. So that was my most expensive learning where we spent all that money doing crazy things on TV ads and print ads and this and that. In a time when there was hardly internet, dial-up connection was hard to get at maybe 56 kbps was a good speed at that point of time. So I'm talking again of year 2000-2001 where we talked about gaming and people looked at us like we were crazy. But the even bigger craziness happened in 2002. So we spent all our money, we were completely out of money. And I remember going to Praveen Gandhi, who I believe spoke here some time back. And uh, we told Praveen Bhai that the next big wave of gaming is mobile gaming. I mean, believe me, I mean, they thought we were crazy because this was the time when mobile phone games, mobile phone call was 16 rupees a minute. So telling somebody that somebody is going to play games on a mobile phone sounded like this guy is completely crazy. But uh, as, as I told you, right, it's a crazy to do crazier things. We were able to be among the first companies in the world who started creating games for mobile phones. We created black and white games on Java and all kinds of languages. And by 2003, we were among the leading game companies in the world on the mobile platform. In fact, we became so big that we had games like Spider-Man, which we did. We did Day After Tomorrow, Bruce Lee, so all the major Hollywood brands started coming and working with Indian games to make games for them. And uh, last year, in 2012, I think about two years back, India Games not only became the biggest games company in India, we had a huge market share, but what also happened is that whether it was IPL or whether it was Gajni or Ravan or Take any major movie, games around that was started to be made by us. And uh, Disney came and I think in 2012 Disney acquired my company. Uh, and now India Games is of course part of Disney itself. And then I was with them for about a year, but you know, knowing me, you would of course realize that I can't be in Disneyland. I have to be in my own fantasy world. <laughs> so coming back to the whole idea of passion as well as the uh, person, clearly. The problem in you know in a place like IIT is all of you are in a bad place. That I have scored so much marks and I need to whatever your day zero. What's it called when you get hired? What is that day called? Day? Day after tomorrow. <laughs> whatever that day zero or day one. So all of you here, your barometer of success is unko package kitna de rahe hai But the reality is, if you go to Stanford or IIT or MIT. Uh, and, and by the way, next week at TechCrunch, which is one of the biggest startup events in the valley, there the smartest kids are not joining companies. They are saying that you know what? I'm going to destroy these five companies because the vision I have is going to make all these five products obsolete. And there people are saying that how much funding are you willing to give this crazy idea? So the entire concept is flipped out. 